Hey there everybody, this is Jason Brown with Boone County 4-H. I'm just doing a video tutorial today on our duct tape pillow that we're going to make. And so we've got our kit ready, we've got some instructions. Uh, I'm going to do the video, it's going to help you see how to do everything from a visual point of view. But I also want to point out that if you'll go to the website Instructables, and if you'll just type in duct tape patio pillow uh, on the Instructables website, you can also look that up. And so maybe you don't want to watch this full video. You just need a real quick reference to size or how many pieces of something to cut out. Go to the Instructable website and just look that up and uh, you'll be able to find that real quickly. And I'll be referencing that myself as we go through the video. Uh, if you've signed up for the class and you're taking it at home, you will receive this packet, this little kit. And inside the kit, you should have a Ziploc bag. That's the inside of your pillow, and you'll see that in a moment. You have three rolls of tape. You're going to have just three various colors. Some of, your, some of you might have a duct tape that is a design on it, maybe flowers, something like that. And that's going to help sort of bring out, um, sort of make the, the front of the pillow pop when we make the design on the front. I chose to go with maybe like a UK design since, you know, 4-H and, and extension services through the University of Kentucky. And so I have blue, uh, white, and the grayest uh, that I could find as far as a color. But that's our tape there. You should have a 12 inch ruler inside that you're going to need to measure with. I threw a sharpie in there. You probably have sharpies at home, but I threw that in there. And then of course, there's a little uh, bit of an instruction guide here at the top. It just talks about how you'll have the video tutorial. That video tutorial is going to be on our Facebook page. If you don't find it easily, just call me and I'll link it to you through our YouTube uh, channel that we have. It also will list things that are in the kit, three rolls of duct tape and etc. Not included in the kit is going to be scissors. And I would assume most of you probably have scissors at home. Also, um, some type of like Goo Gone or WD-40 is going to be really important. And the reason being, as you continuously cut the duct tape, the blades are going to start to get sort of gummy and there will be a buildup. And that will actually cause you to not have a very good cut and you want some nice neat cuts. And so maybe some WD-40, maybe some kind of Goo Gone or something like that. We don't provide that, but I highly recommend you clean your scissors. And then of course the last is the pillow filler. You know, if you've got some old newspapers laying around or you've got some paper that's been used that's been printed on but nobody needs it anymore, that's perfect paper uh, to use to fill the, the pillow up. Or if you want it to have cotton in it, you can obviously go to a, a craft store and buy that. So with all that said, let's jump right in and get started on our pillow. Okay, so we have our three types of duct tape here and we're going to get started. One thing I want to point out when it comes to the duct tape is that craft duct tape, like we have the white and the, um, the blue, and sometimes the white will come and it'll be a little bit stronger. A lot of times the craft duct tape is a little bit thinner. It's not as strong and sturdy as classic duct tape. And you need to know that because when you go to start working with it, sometimes that flimsy craft duct tape, it doesn't cooperate very well and it can cause you some issues. It really will take a lot of patience there uh, with that. So you just want to make sure uh, that you're aware of that. Um, it does take some time to do it. And I'm going to ask you in a, a second when you probably start on yours to create um, some of the pieces you need and you'll feel like you're getting repetitive stress disorder because you're just over and over and over again recreating these pieces. It'll pay off. Uh, but at first you might feel a bit stressed by it. But the first thing we need is we need eight 12 inch pieces and this blue is going to be our main color. So that's going to be what's on the back of the pillow and what trims it out. So we're going to go with blue and we need eight pieces. Pretty simple stuff. You do, you want to go ahead and stretch out your piece of tape and you just need to take it. Now I always lay it down on the end with a little bit sticking up. Okay, and you want, especially again with this flimsy craft duct tape, you want to make sure it lays flat and then you want to leave some up at the end because if you, obviously if you lay it all down, it's stuck. Not much you can do to fix that. Now we're just going to take our ruler. I'm going to mark right here just to cut off that rough spot. And of course we said it has to be 12 inches long, so we're going to mark down here. your line, make a straight, nice. Like that. And we are going 
to, like I said, cut off this rough end. And you probably may not be able to see that in the film, but I'll hold it up for you here in a second. And again, like I said, sometimes the craft duct tape doesn't cooperate as well as the regular. It's not a big deal. So there you have 12 inch piece right there. And you need eight of uh, these pieces cut out. Now, I do, and this will, I'll, I'll say this again, I have had students, if you've got a nice big long table like I'm working at today, I've had students run out two or three foot of duct tape and just mark and cut big sections. You can do that, uh, and it works. Uh, but just for your sake of seeing it, that is what you have for that first piece. Okay, pretty simple. Just make sure that you take your time and laying it down. And what I'll do is I'll do one more real quick and then we'll sort of jump ahead to being finished with that part. But again, just so you can see it a second time, I know it's simple, but it's easy to forget. You wanna leave some of that sticking up. Make sure when you press down, especially on this flimsy art duct tape, make sure that it presses down. You wanna leave some at the end. That edge is nice, so we're going to use it. Mark right there. Pull it up. And again, sometimes, and I probably need to clean these scissors too. It's probably part of the problem. They need to be really clean uh, so that they can make a nice clean even cut. So probably when we break here on the camera here in a second, I will clean those. So that's number two. I need five more. So when I come back in a second, I'll have clean scissors and five more strips. So we've got our eight strips like this. Okay. Here comes the tricky part. And if you're a person that thinks that maybe you need a little help from the parents or a friend or grandma, you know, get help because this can be tricky. And by the way, and I might do it, if you mess up on this part, you know, don't stress it. You've got plenty of duct tape, all that stuff is there. But what you're essentially gonna do is you're gonna lay the pieces down. And again, you kinda got them to lay down a little bit without your fingers touching them. And you're gonna take, oops, and you're gonna start. Now, you gotta hold it at the edge here. And again, it wants to stick to your fingers, so it's gonna be hard, but you wanna bring it to the edge and you wanna overlap not very much at all. It's um, a measurement wise, it's an, about an eighth of an inch or maybe a fourth, but you're gonna try to line it up as straight as you can and lay it down. And again, your fingers might stick to it a little bit and you're just gonna rub that over like that, okay? And you're gonna do that. Now, I don't know how well you can see that, but you can tell there, hopefully, that there's a little bit of an overlap, but not much. Uh, and the overlap has to be even, okay? Uh, some students will kind of put the overlap and it'll be a little thick on one end, a little thin on the other. That's, we can work around that. It's fixable, but it's not as neat as you need it to be. And you wanna make sure it's nice and flat, no waves. Okay, so I'm gonna show you one more piece and then we'll zoom ahead to the next part. So again, just wanna get it to a point where Hold it out nice and straight. Again, you're gonna overlap it. Try to overlap it as even as possible with the two ends lining up. You're just gonna try to slowly press it down. And again, don't sweat it if you make a mistake. Now, some of them, because yeah, it's 12 inches, but it's not a perfect 12 inches. You're gonna have a little bit of edge there. Don't worry about that. I mean, obviously, if you have one that's really long and one's really short on each side, that's a problem. But if you see the rough edge there, it doesn't look like it lines up, that's okay. We'll fix that here in a second. But again, you will have eight of those together, and we'll be back in just a second. Okay, so uh, again, like we said, the Ziploc bag is your, your inner liner. Now, the bags come with a little tab, so you can open it easy, but what we're gonna do is you're just gonna take your scissors and kind of cut along and just cut that little tab off because it'll actually kind of just get in the way so we don't need that. Your big piece should look like this. Now there'll be some overlap. Uh, some of the, and I think inside of the Instructables it says only seven strips. I've always done eight um, just to make sure there's plenty because you can trim it off. But what we're gonna do, and this again is hard because you gotta kind of keep it tight and then when you lay it down, you can start working from the middle out, okay? And so, and I'm actually, let's say, for the camera's sake and for my sake, I'm gonna try to find an angle I can work with so you can see it, but I actually get the job done the way I want. 
but you're going to lay the center down as tight as you can. And if it sticks a little bit, that's okay. It's probably not down so much that you can't slowly work to pull a little bit of it up. I don't think that'll work right there. And your, your excess pieces, because they won't be showing later, we can just take this, we can just um, try to make sure you line up with the pillow. You don't want to go too far forward, but you can just take that, kind of fold that up, fold that up right there, close out the bottom. And I'll see that. And then close that down, because again, no one's going to see that. And you can take your scissors and just lightly trim that edge right there. Just make sure you don't cut the Ziploc bag. That would be bad. You can just trim that right there. Trim that right there just to get that out of the way. And you can go straight across and trim that top as well. So you should have that at the end. You're gonna, so the back's covered nice and flat. You might have a little waves and imperfections in there, but it's, a, it's gonna happen. It's an imperfect project, obviously, because it's, it's duct tape. Uh, so you might have some spots where you're like, oh, there's a wave there or something. Uh, don't stress that. You'll have little tiny waves in there that aren't a big deal uh, at the end of it all, but that's pretty good, pretty square. So we should be able to work with that. Uh, and so we'll come back in a second and start on the next step. So the next thing we're gonna work on is the pieces for the middle section here. Uh, this is the pillow I did several years ago. Uh, it's got a black sort of trim and body to it and then it's got the, the design inside. Like I said before, some of you might have in your kit, you might have some kind of design that you can use to kind of add some pop to the pillow there. Uh, I use three different colors on the middle that are different from the trim and the back of the pillow. You'll actually only have three colors to work with and so what you'll want to do is your star right here will need to be the same color as the pillow. So those, when I do mine, will be blue. But you're gonna make, um, you'll need eight of your little star color, which again for me will be blue. And then you'll have, um, you'll have, uh, I'll have eight of the gray color. And then the white color I'm gonna make for the most of them is gonna be, there's, there's eight and there's eight and then there's 16 of the gray color that you see there. Uh, again, like I said before, the thing that, uh, this is that part where it might get a bit stressful and repetitive uh, simply because, simply because it's, it's a lot to do. Good thing about taking the kit home is there isn't any sort of restrictions on time. You know, so if you get the part we just did done, uh, completed, then take a break and walk away, go watch some cartoons, or go outside. Uh, we're, we're in the classroom setting, like here at the office, sometimes we're under a little bit of a time crunch and, and we have to push you to kind of get things done as quickly as possible, but we don't have that issue because you're at home doing it. And so if you need to take a break, you know, make eight of the little triangles, then go outside and get a breather and come back. I completely understand that point of view. Highly recommend you take breaks when you can. Otherwise, uh, you could get stressed out. Now, as you see me doing here, and I said earlier, you can run out and cut several pieces at one time. The sections to make your triangles are gonna be three inches long. And so you see with the 12 inch ruler, we're gonna have four pieces that we can cut. And again, if you have a long enough table, you can just run out several pieces all at once and cut them and do it that way. But if, just for our uh, demonstration sake, I'm just gonna cut a few here. The triangles have to really be straight up triangles. Um, if they're not, it really isn't gonna work. And you'll know that when you get to that point where you start putting them together, that if they're not, not rightly shaped, it's gonna be an issue. But what you're simply gonna do is you're gonna turn it over, and it may take a couple of pieces of practice. Um, I may mess this one up right here. I'm not sure, it's been a while since I've done it, and so it, it does take patience. And so you're gonna 
lay it over and lamp it and touch it on the edge and you notice the edge has got to line up there. You're going to push it out, sit down like that, just like you see there. Okay, so you see how I laid it down. No wrinkles, nothing like that. And then you can take this piece here and you're going to lay it over and line it up right there and then start working it down just like you did there. Okay. And then you can take your scissors, trim that piece off, and then you have a lovely, lovely triangle. Now, what you don't want to do, and again, sometimes, sometimes this is the way it happens. We get frustrated, or we get like sort of upset, or we, la we lose patience or whatever. But you do want to make sure that you're doing all that that I showed. I have had students that have uh, done things like that, where they line it up, and then when they sort of move it over, then obviously you start to have issues because you're not lined up or the triangle isn't a perfect triangle. And so you want to make sure that you take your time uh, and you work on making sure everything lays over as well as it could. So we have our eight blue colors, okay. Again, they need to look really good. They may not be absolutely perfect. Some of mine have a little bit of edge to them. Uh, but I can put that face down and no one will see it. But uh, you just want to make sure that there are no waves and that it actually looks like a triangle. Uh, sometimes they, they're, they're kind of odd shaped and if they don't have a real triangle look like you see there, um, it's not going to be the color or it's not going to be the shape that you want. We're going to push that out of the way. Our next color that we're going to make eight of is going to be the gray. So we'll push that down, run that out. Again. If you have a long enough table, definitely get that 12 inch ruler and start marking your ever your threes. There you go. I'm gonna cut those. And again, I cannot stress this enough, the idea of being patient with the triangles. Like when we took a break from the video and I made the rest of my eight um, for the blue colors, you know, I was having some difficulties. I had to remake a couple of them a bit a bit taxing in the sense of patience Because oftentimes the duct tape will sit there and it'll start to get sticky and it sticks your fingers and you're getting tired of it and You maybe had to redo a couple and and again good thing about being at home take a break if you have to or just be patient don't sweat it, you got plenty of tape, got plenty of time. Just work through it and try to get your, get them made, and get them put together. All right, so we've got our two colors of eight. We've got the blue, we've got the gray, we'll call it. It's kind of classic silver. Now we're gonna do our white. You need 16 of these. Now, you know, I'm doing 16 of the white. You all can decide what color you want. I would say that whatever color your pillow is, like if your pillow's black, you'll want your star in the center to be black. I know again with my pillow I did a little bit different, but one of the things you can look at is if you look up the Instructables website, you can tell the pillow's black, the star in the center stands out, and it's black. And so that'll help you sort of see what that looks like with that. So I'm going to make my 16 triangles, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I've got my um, eight triangles here. There's eight here. There's 16 of the white here. The next step. And again, if you look at the instructable instructions, are to make the face. And that's what we've been working on. Now we've got to sort of build it. And so you're going to, you need four 12 inch long strips of the tape. Okay. And we're going to start building that. And you want to have sort of the, the image sort of in front of you. And this might be a good reason to maybe download the instructable instructions is to have the image in front of you. Uh, like that or however you want to do it. Um, but you're going to lay this out and you need to start building. So again, the blue is our triangle or our star that's going to be in the middle. Okay. And it's going to be the silver that's going to be um, in the picture what's the purple you would say. And then the white would be the blue that you see in the picture there. And so obviously as you can tell if we start here on this side and build up the first color we need is going to be the silver and of course you can see what it's going to where it's going to be and you're going to take it and you want to line it up as straight as you can on the 
edge here. Maybe go an inch up or so and lay that down right there on the edge. Okay, like that. Uh, you want to make sure it covers the edge. And this is the part where you really start to see is my triangles the shape they should be. Because if they're true triangles, they should make perfect squares going up the tape. If they're not perfect squares going up the tape, you know you're off somewhere, might have to remake one of your triangles, okay? Hopefully we won't have to do that, but that's what you're looking at. And so obviously first color, as we see there, that's the gray, which would have been purple on our little diagram here from our instructions. The next color is gonna be the white, and it'll be whatever color that was your 16 that you made. And I'm just gonna lay that right here. Try to line it up. And you might have to move. I'm gonna move it a little bit so that you can see it with the camera, hopefully. So there's that piece there. Make sure it's pressed down nice, tight, even as it can get. The next color, as we can see from our diagram, is gonna be a part of that star, that outside star we're making. So it's gonna be a blue triangle, okay? And it's gonna face this way. So we wanna line this up on the edge there. Just like you see there. Then we're gonna need another white. Make sure we do that right. So I'm gonna finish this up and then we'll show you what the next part looks like. Okay, so we have our full design and like I said, if you download the Instructables um, information, then you can kind of get a look at what it should finally look, at, look like and you see mine. And I've got it all lined up now. Even with perfect triangles, you might have some parts where it overlaps and as long as you can look at your side and see everything's squared up like it should, you can actually just trim off that, light, that little bit right there. So we're going to make sure everything looks good. But what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over, okay? And we're going to take tape and we're going to start. And the strips I made are about eight inches long, but I think I made them maybe a little bit too long. So you're going to start pressing and you're just, you're just tying it all together really is what you're doing with your pillow facing. So, and like I said, I think I made mine just a little bit too long, which is not a big deal. I can tear that and pull that up. I can just run a piece across the back there just to secure it. And then you can flip it over and kind of look a little bit. And again, even if it's perfect, sometimes the image won't line up perfectly. You might have a couple of small gaps there, and um, that is going to happen to a degree uh, with any of them. And you, you know, if you want, if you're that type of person that wants to be extra careful and look good, you know, you can, you can kind of pull these up and adjust them a little bit uh, to fill in the gaps. Like as an example, that one right there, you could work on it, get it to kind of work up. If you think it's kind of out of place, you can kind of pull it up a little bit, maybe move it over just a hair. See how it fills in that gap a little bit more. You can do stuff like that to kind of fill those things in and just adjust a little bit. Again, as long as you're patient, take your time, um, you can pull tape apart and stuff like that and do it pretty successfully. So once we have that done, we need to trim the outside of the front. And so you're just gonna take, and you're not gonna overlap by much. It's really um, just a tiny, tiny amount over that edge just to, trim the, the front end. Like so. You can see, get myself. And then you can take that and fold that over. And that'll help secure the back that much more. Okay, so you have that laid down. You can trim the edges off right here. Be fine. And you'll just wanna work your way around. So when we come back here in a minute, we're gonna fix the face to your pillow. All right, so we've centered it up. You wanna center it up there in the middle, on the front. And you're just gonna take, and again, you're wanting to lay it down. 
and you can just brush it right across there. Okay. And of course you'll have be a little bit maybe there showing. You can take that and overlap that right there. And again, if there's anything hanging on the bottom, you can just easily trim that off and no one's gonna see it really. Let's see. As we can tell, there is a little there, so. And again, just be careful, because I, like I mentioned earlier, if you're gonna trim off some of this, just make sure you don't cut into your bag. Right up there. Okay, like so. Now, when you fold this over, you obviously don't wanna fold that over because you don't want to close up the bag. And so the top part, definitely, you're not gonna, don't wanna fold that over, okay? And with the bottom part, can fold that over right there, press that down. We'll hold off on that one at the top. Again, you can just trim that little bottom piece off. So when I come back, we'll have the top done and then I'll, I'll tell you the final steps of kind of trimming that out and getting that done. Okay, so um, we're pretty much done except for the top part here. And we just need to maybe lay a little trim on the inside to cover this piece up and uh, fill that in. The obvious thing is when you lay it in there, you don't want to um, cover up the tracks there where the Ziploc bag seals. Otherwise, obviously it won't seal. And so we're gonna take a piece of tape. I'm gonna try try and one thing you can do too if you want to get it to sort of puff out and hold out is maybe lay that down it kind of opens it up a little bit for you kind of like that for the camera it kind of opens it up where you can work inside there because the tapes in there kind of holding it up and so you're just going to go in and you're going to lay the tape on the inside and again when you lay that down just make sure you don't cover the track because if you cover the track then you won't be able to lay it down so at the end it should look like that where it's kind of filled in there a little bit and then you can kind of just fold that over like that fold that down press that in okay and of course you'll flip it over and do the other side with another piece of tape now on the edges there it looks like there's a little bit left that's not covered what you can do is just simply take a piece of tape and just a small strip and fill that in, you know, because once that closes, no one's gonna see that. So even though it's a little bit short on there and you can still kind of see the bag in there, you can always take a piece, an extra piece, and just run it over there just to fill that in. But other than that, that's really about it as far as the, the look of the pillow and everything. Um, you do wanna check, maybe run your hand in there and kind of check your edges. If something looks a little loose or like it's not down, you could always just take another piece and run it there and fold it over just to secure it. So those are some things that you can do with that. Again, stuffing's on you, so you'll be needing to stuff it. And if you put paper, whatever you put in it, it's gonna look like that in the end. Hopefully this video has helped you out quite a bit. Again, if you have any issues, uh, call me, email me, you know, reach out to me and let me know. There's ways we can help you out. Uh, if you're stuck on a part, uh, the information's in the little handout that I put inside your kit. Hopefully you enjoyed it and uh, I would love to see your pillows. Don't forget about the fair coming up. We're uh, still unsure about how all the fair and the fair entries for 4-H is gonna work out, but we do have plans to try to do something. And so just keep your ears open for that. Uh, that's gonna, information is going to be coming soon. Post the pictures that you have of your projects, not only this, but other projects on the Facebook page. We'd love to see that kind of stuff uh, and uh, sort of promote that. It'll let us see what it is that you've accomplished uh, since we're not able to have class here together. Hope everybody has a great day uh, and stay safe.